Okay, this is lesson 7-2, which is angles and the unit circle. Our essential question is, how can we extend the trigonometric ratios to angles greater than 90 degrees? So the first example says to find the measure of an angle in standard position. So what is the measure of the angle shown? So we're trying to find that angle right there, theta. So that's an angle that's greater than 90 degrees. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make it into a triangle. So if I drop this down, we can tell based on the coordinate point and also because it's on a graph that this distance right here is 4. This is 4 squared of 3. And hopefully from our previous lesson, that looks familiar because the long leg is squared of 3 times greater than the short leg. So that tells us that this angle here is 30, so this one right here is 60. And we know that our hypotenuse would be 8. Um, so that means that we are finding this angle right here, and they are supplementary angles. So they add up to 180, so we could take 180 minus 60, and we get 120 degrees. Okay, so if let's that example worked because it was a 30, 60, 90, which is one of our special cases, but what if it didn't work? So um, what if it was not a 30, 60, 90, and we needed to find the angle that way? So I just want to kind of give that example. So if we're trying to find this angle in here, um, this one right here, we could say, okay, we know that, we know the side opposite and we know the side adjacent, so that would be tangent. So I could say tangent of theta is equal to 4 squared of 3 over 4. And if we ever want to find the angle given the value, we use the inverse. So I could take the inverse tangent of 4 squared of 3 over 4 and type that into the calculator, making sure I'm in degree mode, and you would get 60 degrees. Okay, but then you would have to realize, okay, that's that's a acute angle. It's between 0 and 90, but um, these are what we call reference angles, and we're going to talk about more in the second example. So a reference angle is an angle in each quadrant that's going to be less than 90 degrees, but it's going to have the same trig value um, as the obtuse angle that lands at the same terminal side. Okay? Um, in fact, let's talk about some of those vocab right now. Oh, I added in the wrong spot. There we go. Okay, so this is in the actual notes, but just to kind of vocab here. So we always measure our angles um, counterclockwise. So this is our initial side, and this is referred to as the terminal side. So initial goes to the terminal side. And then you're going to see things that say co-terminal angles. So co-terminal angles are angles that end up at the same terminal side. For example, let's say we have a 30 degree angle. Okay, now let's say I go all the way around a circle and then back up to my 30 degree angle. That's going to be um, 390 degrees. So we would say that 30 degrees and 390 degrees are what we call co-terminal angles because they have the same terminal side even though the number value is not the same. Okay? Okay, so now this is more on reference angles, what we were kind of starting to talk about in the previous example. So up here in the upper right, you can see we have our four quadrants. And I'm going to write in here, so this is zero degrees, straight up is 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270, and then we would be back to 360. If I can fit that in there, maybe not, not 36. We'll say 360, there we go. Okay, so in each quadrant we can draw um, a reference angle. So your reference angles are always going to form right angles with 
the x-axis. So your right angles always need to be formed with the x-axis. They're not formed with the y-axis. So these four angles in here are our acute reference angles. So they can help us find the trig values when the trig functions when we're not, when it's a bigger number than 90 degrees. Okay, so for example, it says what's the reference angle for a 130 degree angle? So if we think about this, we know 130 is going to be between 90 and 180, so that puts me in the second quadrant. So that right there is a 130 degree angle. So what I want to know is that little angle in there. So we know that the x-axis would be 180 degrees, so we think, okay, the difference between 180 and 130 is 50. So that means my reference angle would be 50 degrees. And you will kind of see in future lessons why these reference angles are helpful. Okay, 210 degree angle, so that would be between, that'd be in the third quadrant. So 210 would be all the way that way, but we want to know that little angle right in there. So we want to know the difference between 210 and 180. that's going to give us a 30 degree reference angle. Okay, and then this last example says the reference angle is 45 degrees and its terminal side lies in quadrant four. So here's quadrant four. So this angle right here, so we know it's with our x-axis, is 45. So we want to know what angle, what possible measures and negative measures for the angle. So if we're going positive measurement, it's going to be all the way around um, except for 45 degrees. So we would take 360 minus 45 and we get 315. So that's a possible positive angle and then a negative angle just goes in the opposite direction. So going clockwise, um, 45, it, it would just be negative 45 degrees and that negative tells us a direction, not necessarily the value. Okay, so the big, big thing in this lesson is the unit circle. So the unit circle is a circle that has its center at the origin and has a radius of one. So you can form right triangles within a unit circle and based on what we know about different points along our unit circle and the fact that it has a radius of one. So if we look at this triangle right here, if I was finding sine of theta, it would be y over one, which is just y cosine of theta would be x over 1, which is just x. So if you're on the unit circle, sine is y, cosine is x, and then tangent would be y over x. Okay, so the unit circle allows us to find different values, and we're going to look more, more in depth with the unit circle and kind of the connection to our special right triangles um, in a little bit. Okay, so our next example says an angle has a measure of 60 degrees and a terminal side that intersects the unit circle at x, y. What are the values of x and y? So we're thinking here, so here's, so here's our unit circle. And here's, this one's 60 degrees. Okay. And so this point right here is x, y. So we want to know, we want to find the values of x and y. Well, we know, the good news is, it's a special right triangle. This is 30. So we know that our um, short side, if our short side is 1, hypotenuse is double that, and our long side is square root of 3. So what we have to do, though, is we have to think, okay, our hypotenuse is not 2 on the unit circle, it's a 1. So that means that all of these values need to be cut in half. So that would mean that my x would be, my short side would be a half, and my long side would be square root of 3 over 2. So the point that matches a degree of 60 degrees would be 1 half square root of 3 over 2. Okay. So the other thing with the unit circle is that we think of, um, we use degrees, but we also use radians. So radians are another way, another measurement of angles. 
and one radian is equal to the arc, so, sorry, no, the arc that opens up to the, okay, I'm confusing myself here, the angle that opens up to the arc on the circle, um, the arc is equal to the radius. So if you have a radius of three and you have a measurement of one radian, that would mean that the arc length is also three. So the special thing about radians is that within a circle, you notice it's kind of a third of half of our circle. If we came up here, that would be two radians and three radians is kind of a rough sketch would be about there and you'd have a little piece left over. So what's special about that, if you think of a number that is slightly bigger than three, it's pi. So there are pi radians in half of the circle and there are two pi radians in a whole circle. So, um, and we can, it shows you down here how that comes about with the circumference, knowing that the radius is one. So we have two pi radians in a whole circle and we have pi radians in half a circle. So when you're converting back and forth between degrees and radians, we could use the conversion factor that two pi equals 360, but we always like to simplify if we can. So we're gonna use the fact that pi equals 180 degrees. Pi radians equal 180 degrees. Okay, um, this is just a little bit more information. So here we have zero pi, pi over two, pi, three pi over two. So if you're trying to find four pi over three radians. So um, I think of, if you think of this as one whole, so we know that that would be pi over three, that would be two pi over three, this would be three pi over three, which is a whole, and then this right here would be four pi over three. So you can kind of split it up, think of like a pie or a pizza, um, to split it up into, um, six equal sectors, okay? So our last thing is converting. That's what we were getting at. So I'm using the fact that there are pi radians in 180 degrees, okay? So if I want to convert seven pi over seven radians, um, if you remember unit conversions back in math or even in science, you use unit conversions a lot, so if I want to cancel the pi radians, I need to put that on the bottom part of my conversion so that they cancel. So I'm gonna put pi radians down here and I'm converting it into 180 degrees up here. So the pi's cancel, the radians cancel, and I'm left with 180 degrees over seven, which 180 divided by seven would be roughly 25.71 degrees, approximately. Okay, now if I want to take 75 degrees, this is the opposite direction. So I want to turn degrees into radians. So this time I would need to put the 180 degrees on the bottom of my conversion and the pi radians on the top. Cancel the degrees. So then if I multiply, I have 75 pi radians over 180, and then I can simplify. I can do 75 over 180. If I simplify that, I get five over 12. So my answer would be five pi over 12 radians. So that's how we convert back and forth between the two. Okay, so there's a lot of information. Unit circle is kind of a very big concept. So if you have questions, please let me know and I will help